Hello and welcome to the Irish Pagan School YouTube channel. This is myself, Laura Bryan, and I am here as the author and co-founder of the Irish Pagan School, and we're going to be talking about Oam Stones. So what are Oam Stones? Before writing on vellum manuscripts, so we do have an extensive manuscript tradition here in Ireland, which would have started in medieval times, early medieval times, with the coming of Christianity to Ireland and the colonization of Ireland, our first colonization uh, through Christianity. So they did bring um, the written tradition with them to a certain extent, but before they came with their um, with their writing systems. We actually had a writing system here in Ireland already. So we wrote on stones in Ohm, and this was a system or a script of writing that wasn't wasn't the same as writing as we know it today, and you know writing in your journal or in your copy books or whatever. But it did serve a function for inscriptions on these Ohm stones that we're going to be talking about today. So this records an early, an early form of the Irish language, and that is the Irish language that we still have here in Ireland today, Gaelga we call it, uh, in, in the language it's called Gaelga. And we, we can date the stone inscriptions linguistically, we can't date them archaeology, we get archaeologically, we'll get back to archaeology in a minute, but we can date them linguistically from the around the 300s to the 600s common era. So the form of Irish that they represent, um, not all the stones, some of them are in Latin and some of them are in older forms of Irish, or sorry, newer forms of Irish, but the earliest ones that we have can be dated between this 300 and 600s common era period. So this is very early medieval here in Ireland or late Iron Age, I suppose, depending on who you talk to. So we have over 400 examples uh, surviving and known and documented examples of these Oam stones, these pillar stones, these stone slabs, and of course, fragments then of stone, which would have Aum inscriptions on them. And these surviving inscriptions show how the language looked before the Latin manuscript tradition. And when, the man, when they started writing in manuscripts and recording the stories and, and you know, writing everything that they wrote into these massive books, they, um, they were writing in uh, Latin and Irish, both languages, and they were using then the Latin insular script, which became the, the Roman alphabet that we know and, uh, you know, use today. So before that, then they had the, the Ohm system. So I just wanted to do a very short video today on what are the Ohm stones and just give a little introduction to the Ohm stones in this way. And Archaeologically speaking, we can't really date the Oum um, from the stones because you can't carbon date stone. And unfortunately, contextually, um, when these stones are being found, the context that they're being found in is often different from their original positioning or their original context. So, for example, um, we have many of these stones which would have been reused as uh, lintels or window ledges or that kind of thing within early churches that were being built. So they would take these these boundary, these pillar stones, and they would um, put them into the, the construction of the churches. And of course, we don't know exactly why that was done. It could be just that the stones were convenient and already shaped and, you know, the right, the right kind of dimensions. Or it could be a kind of a reclaiming of the um, the older traditions and an incorporation of the older traditions within to the newer uh, Christian concepts that were coming onto the island. So either of those are possible, and probably some combination of them are, are the the real story there. 
but um, we also have, and I mean, this wasn't just Christians who were doing this. We also have, say, for example, in the uh, the, the cave of Kruokhan in the Rathcrohan complex in County Roscommon, we have a medieval souterrain, which has incorporated, just when you go in over the entrance, um, as you're looking back out, you can see all inscriptions and in another one in a, in a, a standing um, a vertical standing stone, um, there is an ohm inscription. And the one there in the cave would read uh, Freyach, son of Maeve. So there are connections at, at Rathcrohan to Queen Maeve. Um, there is a Freyach named in the mythology and in the stories who would be the son-in-law of Maeve. Um, he would have otherworldly connections through his mother. He was a warrior as well and, you know, had, had his own stories and would have been um, involved in uh, otherworldly relations uh, through his mother, who was one of the she and one of the people, the mound dwellers, the, the people of the she. And that is the she Erkrokon. So this entrance to the other world or exit from the other world um, would have been a very uh, spiritual place, probably. Um, but also um, there could have been that practical incorporation of, hey, we need a lot of stone to build the man-made entrance to this natural cave formation. So it starts with the souterrain entrance and goes on to um, a more natural, uh, under, an old underground river actually would have formed that cave originally, way, way back. So, um, so yeah, there are interesting incorporations, archaeologically speaking, of the Ohm stones into various other sites and monuments. And a lot of them then have just been taken down out of fields by uh, farmers or they've fallen down and just been moved over to the side. You know, people back in the day didn't really know what to do with them or didn't really recognize maybe how important they were or, you know, didn't want to use them then or, you know, they would have had associations with ancestors definitely and with olden times to our own people and maybe they were respectfully putting them aside you know they they didn't have the means to uh re reset them in their original positions so the original positions for a lot of these ohm stones have actually been lost and that is very unfortunate and the ones that we do have we can tell that you know this is where the whole boundary stone thing comes from we can tell where um, they would have been on original um, older Gaelic territorial boundaries. So again, probably late Iron Age, very early medieval uh, tribal uh, lands. And they would roughly, some of them would roughly align. And some of the inscriptions then would also give these genealogies. So they could have been burial stones. They could have been boundary markers. Um, they could have been uh, memorial monuments to various people within these tribes. So they are a very important part of Irish history and even into, you know, Irish mythology, um, given the, the Maeve and Freyach type connections that some of the inscriptions would contain. And the whole Ohm script, the, the history of it, the use of it, is a fascinating topic. We do actually have some in-depth classes at the Irish Pagan School. We have an introduction to Ohm and an Ohm divination class. Oh, my alarm is going off, apologies for that. And you can, you can go and you can check out those if you want to. Um, but I would like to do maybe a short series here on the Irish Pagan School YouTube channel where we detail some um, some further OM questions. So if you had any or we answer own questions or just give a little bit more of information in a digestible format such as this. So if you do have any questions or if you would like to see more on the OM, just give us a comment below, like the video so we know that this is the type of content that you're here for. And I will see you in the next video. Oh, and make sure that you're on the mailing list as well. There's a link to the mailing list below. And um, we, we send out regular resources on OM and various other topics and information on classes and all the rest of that good stuff. So um, you will get lots of free resources by joining our Irish Pagan School mailing list as well. And again, all free. So Slongafall, and I will see you in the next video.